I'm testing out a method for creating a halo energy sword using fiberglass. To get the template, I just traced out a reference image using Illustrator, and now I'm going to cut that out of some foam, which will be the base for forming the fiberglass. I first rough cut the parts, then trimmed everything precisely along the template lines. To mark where the bevel needs to go, I cut into my pattern somewhat so I could fold back that part and then marked that using a sharpie. And that will be the guide for shaping the foam. To create the beveled edges, I used some files and sandpaper and smoothed everything down using that bevel line as a guide. Once the pieces were shaped, I taped them down to a piece of board covered in peel ply. Now I extended the tape past the edges onto the peel ply to create a smooth transition and to help keep resin from seeping underneath. I haven't tested this tape to see how well resin sticks to it, so I'm just going to cover the whole thing in PVA. This will also let me know where there might be any leaks that the resin would seep under. I did start to see leaks right away. The tape had edges that were sticking up quite a bit in a few places. So this let me know exactly where I needed to add more tape to ensure that there was a decent seal. I let that PVA dry thoroughly and then applied the fiberglass. So I used two sheets of fiberglass on each piece and then I also applied all of the scraps on top. So I ended up with maybe three to four layers on the entire piece. This is a very thin fiberglass though, so it made for quite a thin part. I'm using tabletop epoxy because it is the clearest epoxy that I have and I want to have the least yellowing possible so that the light will come through nice and bright. I'm using a spreader to apply the resin and work out any bubbles before applying the next layer of fiberglass. 
I allowed the parts to cure overnight, and then before removing them from the mold, I traced out the edges, which will be the cut lines, and then carefully peeled up the edges and removed the part from the foam. It's very thin and flexible at this point. The resin isn't even 100% cured. It will get more brittle over the next few days. But right now it's enough that it's going to hold the 3D shape and also be very easy to trim using scissors. There is of course still a layer of PVA on here, which is why it has that green cast right now, but that will be washed off before proceeding. I noticed that the sharpie was somewhat difficult to remove from the edges because the fiberglass is textured. So for the center line mark, I have added some packing tape on top of this, and then I will mark on that to indicate where the pieces need to line up with the spine. And that should be easier to remove because I just don't want to have any of the sharpie on the edges specifically since that's where the light's supposed to show through. So I want to keep those as clear as possible. To lock in the 3D shape, I've cut a thin strip of the same foam that was used for the mold portion, and I shaped that towards the tip so that it tapers down to match the shape of the pattern. And then that gets glued in place. I'm just using hot glue for this. It will get reinforced later with the epoxy, but this will keep everything in place while I attach the LEDs. The pieces have very little rigidity when they are just fresh off the mold and trimmed, but as soon as you add in that center piece, then they no longer are flopping around. They become fairly rigid. I had red and white LEDs on hand, so that's what I'm going to use. I attached these using the peel and stick on the back and trimmed them to size. I'm attaching them facing out towards the edges since the idea with this sword is that the edges will be the clear fiberglass and then the center will be covered using carbon fiber. That was the plan anyways, so that's why I'm attaching them in this orientation versus having them facing outward. At each stage, I tested the LEDs to make sure that I hadn't caused any damage, that they're all still working, because once this is closed up, there will no longer be access to the LEDs. Because this sword is tapered towards the points, the LEDs can't go all the way down. That was fine for this design, since I was planning to use the carbon fiber and have just the lower edges reveal the fiberglass. So if this were to be a sword that was just fiberglass, then of course there would need to be some changes in the design there to allow the LEDs to go all the way up. Next, I soldered on some wires to the ends of the LEDs so this can be wired up to a battery later on. At this point I decided to remove the weather stripping from the lights since it was somewhat yellowed and it also just added weight for no reason since I don't need any weatherproofing inside the sword. 
However, I didn't notice until too late that the weather stripping had bonded since these are kind of old LEDs, so they ripped out a few of the lights. I had to cut out the damaged portions and solder those back together and then reattach these to the sword. I cut out a space for the wires to pass through from the outer side and then those will fold down and come out where the handle would attach. I also used some hot glue to keep the wires in place and cover up the connection points to ensure that none of the wires cross by mistake. And again, I kept testing the LEDs as I went to ensure that everything was working properly. The fiberglass does start to diffuse the light somewhat, especially out towards the edges, so that was working pretty well. I removed the tape from the outside since these were all properly trimmed and everything was aligned. Then I applied epoxy to all of the inner surfaces. This is the same tabletop epoxy as I used earlier. Now this epoxy is somewhat more viscous than some of the other epoxies that I would normally use for laminating. Also, it was a cold day, so it was fairly thick. However, if you just get it where it needs to go approximately, you can then go over it with a heat gun to make it more liquid again and ensure that everything's properly spread. I cut out some pieces of aluminum foil to fit on the inside right up against the LEDs. They're shorter than the width so that there will be an edge revealed. This is to block out the light from coming out through the center since that's going to be covered with carbon fiber. And then the edges are clear so that the light only shows where it's needed. So this should hopefully help to reflect more of the light outward and make it as bright as possible. With the foil in place and ensuring that the LEDs are all working properly, I closed up the sword. Once the epoxy got to a tacky cured state, I wrapped it in some strips of peel ply to keep the edges together while it cured the rest of the way. This method worked fairly well. A lot of the edges were stuck together. It wasn't perfect, so there were some areas that needed to be touched up to ensure that the sword was closed. But that wasn't a big deal since I was planning on adding more fiberglass over the top anyways to create a stronger edge. I repeated the epoxy and fiberglass application, this time using a heavier weight fiberglass, and I just folded that over into two layers. And once again, any scraps that were cut off, I applied those onto the sword to make it more like three or four layers. Once I had the resin pretty much in place, it was fairly thick because it was starting to set up and also the ambient temperature was pretty cold. So I again used the heat gun to heat that up somewhat. That makes it flow freely again and ensure that everywhere is fully saturated. <laughs> 
At this point, I decided to continue with adding the fiberglass on the other side before the first side had cured because I wanted to see if that would work and if I could get a good clean edge by sticking those together wet. It was somewhat difficult to keep everything together. I left some of the overhang for the fiberglass in the area where the power cables are running out. I want to create a base that hopefully should provide a good attachment point for the handle later on. It's really important to ensure that the resin soaks through the fiberglass thoroughly, not just so that it's as strong as possible, but so that there aren't any areas that are going to be white and not allow the light to pass through as well. Once it cured, I ended up with some areas where the fiberglass had bubbled away somewhat, so it wasn't stuck down to the base of the sword, so that wasn't good. And the edges were still kind of open in some areas, so overall that method didn't work great. I think there's definitely room for improvement for applying further layers. However, that handle piece, that did work really well. That's a nice sturdy attachment point, so that will be easy to add a 3D printed handle over. I went ahead and trimmed off all of those rough edges and started sanding this down, getting rid of those bubbled areas. Of course, then once I remove the bubbles, I'm back down to my very thin original shell layer. So it was not the easiest thing to do to sand this without removing parts that needed to stay. Overall, it was still pretty rough on the outside also, so I think it would need a much thicker fiberglass layer in order to be able to sand it down to a smooth surface that would be ready for carbon fiber to go over top. I was kind of losing my edges in there too. I was getting so many layers of the fiberglass. It was just hard to see. I probably needed to attach the pattern again and perhaps trace that out. I'm working on sanding this down and just running into more and more issues with it. My edges have popped open and it's also really difficult to tell how deep I can sand. So here I sand it too far. Everything's sort of uneven. I think that the main mistake is that the first time around uh, when I was casting the shell, I should have just made it quite a bit thicker. So I had more to work with so that the piece would be more rigid. And then all I would need to do is stick together the edges, possibly reinforce that, but I'm not even sure that that was necessary. Also, I'm thinking that the foil on the inside was a bad idea because now if I close this too much, I don't get just the edge like I'd planned, then it closes off the light, which is one of the problems that I had when I was sticking it together. I realized it was completely closed in some areas, no light was getting through, so I had to go in and reopen it and that just made the edges not stick well. So that's where we are now, why everything's popping open. This does work well, having a fiberglass piece coming straight out of it, so I think that that would actually be better to incorporate into the mold, possibly. So at this point, I'm kind of just ready to start over. I'm not sure that there's too much more I can do with this version. It's just too many mistakes that uh, are just making it harder and harder to proceed. So I think it might be time to just call it quits on this one. That's why I made only one the first time around. So I could get all of my mistakes done on just one and then if necessary, replace this one or just make the other one if it had happened to work out better. So 